How you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Thanks for being here. Well, Bob, how you doing? I think we need to have a serious talk about investing in some sort of air conditioning unit for this room. It's too hot? It gets very hot. It gets very hot. And not in the sexy way. (laughs) It does get very hot. I do have a fan on me. Yeah. It used to be over here, but it kept falling. It was making noise. I I could put it on that box. Good, because we have a box there. I'll put, I'll put it on the box. No, 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 no it's, it's fine. No, it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. Box. He's out of the room. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, Bob. Uh, Will is in control now. How is everybody? How you doing? Happy 15th anniversary to Mama Mia. Mama Mia? Yeah, came out 15 years ago today in theaters. That's not the one you care about. <laughs> but it's a fact. It's a fact. <laughs> now you have a fan. I hope you have uh, It's good. It's nice to have a fan. The air in this house sucks yeah it, it's the the main floor gets all the air yeah and then the up it's split level yeah the upstairs gets barely any and the basement gets absolutely none do you know that yeah that's the that's, that's the vent a, okay you know what i want to do what do you want to do Use my projects all okay. right i want to get pc fans <laughs> and put them in the vent so it sucks the air out that might not be a bad idea. I know. You can do what I did and just spend $350 on a window unit that has Wi-Fi that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I have two ace window unit ACs that have Wi-Fi and neither of them work. So We had to mess around with the with the LG uh, wash tower. The Wi-Fi yeah. was all messed up. Why do we need Wi-Fi on it? I don't know. We just bought a <laughs> Abyssal wet vac and apparently that has Wi-Fi in it. What? Why does it went back and you I don't know. <laughs> That's very stupid. Alexa, so, start my vacuum. Something. I was getting so mad. People were telling me all these like smart light things I should be doing. I was like, bro, sometimes I want to walk in a room and I want to hit the button. Yeah. And when you have like smart lights, you can't do that. Yeah. That's not a thing. Or it, or it messes up everything if you do that. <sighs> I forgot which one. The problem is they're one of the smart light companies does make a light switch. That's and it's like well, it's Wi-Fi enabled, and you just put it over your existing light switch, and you can don't, use that. Don't you need a hub for that? <sighs> Every single one I've seen requires a hub, or it connects Bluetooth to your phone. So, which I, is <sighs> dumb. The problem is I don't know. I don't remember what company it is that makes it. All I know is that it's not TP-Link, which is all the lights, light bulbs in my house. So I'm switching ecosystems right now. I'm too, I'm too in deep. Uh, now I just, I just tell Alexa to turn my lights on. Yeah. But the problem is, we have two Alexas. We mm. have mine, yeah. and we have Hannah's. Uh, and Hannah's is right over there, and mine's over there. So I go, Alexa, turn the lights on. Hers is like lights are not connected, and then this one. So. There's a bit. We got a lot of. I think you got to merge accounts. There's a lot of discrepancies yeah. here, and there's a ways around all of these problems. But I'm willing to bet nine out of ten of you people with the smart devices got some weird wacky oh, shit yeah. that you got to do to get oh, your yeah. stuff to work. Anyway, yeah, that's what this podcast is yeah, about. Yeah, smart homes. Yeah. Uh, we did some audio adjusting. Hopefully, it's good. I uh, when I talk like this, it should be as loud as when I talk like this. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we got a lot of things to talk about today. Yes. We 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 made Gex happen. Yes, so good to we meet did. you. Thanks yes. for being here. Uh, I'm Appreciate adding that to my it. list of games that I mean made happen. So. Uh, we also have to talk about <laughs> everybody's favorite topic here on the Wolf Dead Podcast: oh, the yes. Microsoft uh, yes. Activi- Activision. But Activision. Good news, everyone! <laughs> it's really close to ending soon. We think. We think. We well, think. There's there's been good news. There's I didn't put. Um, what's happening in the UK in the keep? Because like, there's a lot of like, not conflicting reports, but there's a lot going on. But like, things are going Microsoft's way. Okay. So we'll we'll put it like that. I I'm moving things around in the keep. Okay. Uh, right. where is the Microsoft Activision ac- acquisition, or is it just the Sony? Uh... The, well, the Sony one's the big deal. Okay. I think that's the bigger deal than like them trying to, you know, have it go through in the UK. Okay. Because I thought that was the big deal, was that it's over. It's very close to being over. I think the UK, like, they they need an extension in the UK. Okay. But, like, the UK is willing to work with Microsoft to get this done. Uh, Okay. Whatever you say. Uh, But before we talk about that, 
we want to talk about uh are there games with gold no right no. we did that already? okay no. um, there's news about games with gold, i know though. that's why i was thinking of talking about that now but we'll save that we should talk about the big news about the eu repl- uh, uh, uh forcing tech companies to use replaceable batteries this is yes. good news for us mm-hmm. i tweeted about it and a lot of i got a lot of weird takes that i think i'll read when we get really into it. yeah a lot of people thought it was a bad idea to force replaceable batteries i know there's an art- is that some weird like people don't like regulation on companies type bullshit i don't know i maybe i know there's like there's one argument against it but it's not a good argument i'd like to hear that yeah Dark type, thanks for the 100 best best podcast episode for the day I return. Oh my God, hello. Hello. Uh, you returned. I see you in every comment section. <laughs> um, actually, before we do anything, do you want to com- continue to procrastinate and open these Mario Oreos? Uh, yes, yes, I do. So, uh, a little story about that. These are Mario Oreos. They're just regular Oreos, but they got Mario characters on them. Uh, Jackson texted me the other day a picture of these at the Nintendo store and said, do you want me to get these for you? And I said, are you coming to the Nintendo podcast? And he said, you're recording a Nintendo podcast? And I said, (laughs) yes. And he said, I'll see if I can make time. Okay. He's trying to big time me. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah. Uh, But then you just showed up with these, so fuck him. (laughs) Because there were were just a stack of them in my local grocery store. A friend of mine actually pre-ordered them. And the pre-order I, I bonus did. was a letter from Peach. <laughs> oh, that's cool, yeah. though. That was, it was pretty cool. What's the letter look like? Uh, you have a picture? I yeah, I got, see a, I got to find it. It was a while ago. Because it, does it look like the Mario 3 letter? It kind of does. It doesn't say the exact text from the Mario 3 letter. Okay. But, uh, you know, because it doesn't say, I baked the cake for you, because that wouldn't make sense. They're Oreos. So one side is, is a regular Oreo, and the other side, I got Mario. I got Mario. My full, first poll is a Wahoo. Mario. Uh, yes, it says, Princess Peach is missing. Uh, Bowser is trying to take over her castle. You're one of the first people to receive our Super Mario Oreo cookie packs, so we need you to lead fans in a cookie challenge to defeat Bowser. Okay, it's yeah. got, like, the border around it's, it. That it's looks same... like the Mario 64 one. Yeah, like I said, the text is different. Yeah. So, uh, camera, look at me. Camera, camera. I got Mario, and I got the second one I got was a blooper. Was a Blooper is the squid, right? Yes. Yeah, you could probably barely see it. We got Mario here. We got a blooper here. I'm going to eat him. Huh? I got a uh, piranha plant and a coin. Is there a rare one? I think there is. I think they tried to like, gamify. Did I just eat the rare one? <laughs> Discover all 16 cookie designs. So we found four yeah. just now. Oh, on the back, Princess Peach is missing and Bowser is trying to take over her castle. Will you join us and find the right Oreo cookies to help Mario and the other heroes save the kingdom? And there's a QR code. Do I win anything for sa- for getting the Mario one? Oh, uh, Jackson in the chat says, wait, I don't need to bring the cookies anymore. No, well, no you we're should. good. You should for wood. Right. But I got them. We'll got them. Yeah, that's um, right. What was the one? Was it Pokemon? There was one where there was like a thousand dollar cookie. Well, no, because of um, what was it? I think Mew was the rare one, right. and people were selling it on eBay for a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I found one. I ate it. <laughs> Don't give a fuck. No. Um. Maybe I just ate a thousand dollar Mario. I maybe. Know. I don't think I will say. Okay. Fuck you then, Jackson. Aren't you streaming? Get back to work. Was it good? It tastes like an Oreo. Yeah. Texture's a little different because it's uh, Mario's face. And it's not like the co- the um the holiday Oreos where they have different cream colors, so it tricks your mind into thinking they're flavored differently. This is a That's real true. ass Oreo. That's a good point. Yeah. Upstairs I have peanut butter fudge cake. Oh, those are those good. Are those those are, are good. Uh anyway, spank wise, thanks for the twenty three months, two years. And then an emote. Uh, Will Wolf, damn it, a friend of the show, <laughs> with 22 months, says, GE, GE makes the light switch for the smart light bulbs. So I, you like, re- I you looked realize. it up while, while you were opening okay. the cookies. Yeah, I'm like, who made Like, it's GE. You got to buy GE bulbs for the GE light switch. Okay, I understand. 
That's I, not Philips? No. They're not the same? I thought, you know, because all smart home devices are switching over to Matter now, I thought what maybe... What the fuck is that? It's it's the it's supposed to be the one protocol for all devices now. Like Apple, Google, Amazon, like they're all like going to start using that. Oh, so that's kind of cool. It is. But like, I'm already, you know, balls deep in my smart home setup. <laughs> so I don't know how it's going to work. So I thought like maybe if it all ran on matter, I could like, you know, cross pollinate or whatever. But no, I don't say cross pollinate. I know. I couldn't think of the right word. Cross contaminate. It's not. It's you know? not none of those. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's talk about batteries. <laughs> yes. All exciting, all exciting news here at the Wolf Den podcast. Let me accept all the cookies from Eurogamer, goddammit. Okay. Cookies. Oh, what the hell? What? Can you continue this. Okay. Up. All right. Uh, new gaming consoles will need replaceable batteries from 2027. Uh, that's in the EU. Uh, new handheld gaming consoles, such as future versions of the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck, will need to have replaceable batteries by 2027, according to the European Union. Uh, this comes as part of new regulation laid out by the Council of the European Union, which aims to regulate the entire life cycle of batteries to ensure that they are safe, sustainable, and competitive. The idea is batteries are easier to replace and recycle with a guarantee that portable batteries incorporated into appliances should be removable and replaceable by the end user uh, within new devices from 2027 onward. The regulation says this time fr this time frame gives sufficient time for operators to adapt the design of their products to this requirement, uh, calling it an important provision for consumers. While handheld gaming devices are not mentioned specifically in this document, the EU representative confirmed to Overkill the batteries of gaming handhelds are covered by batteries and waste battery regulations. Uh, further documentation stated a portable battery shall be considered readily removable by the end user where it can be removed from a product with the use of commercially available tools without requiring the use of specially, uh, specialized tools unless provided free of charge with the product. It's something Nintendo may want to bear in mind with its uh, inevitable Switch successor. Batteries are key to the decarbonization process and the EU shift towards a zero emission modes of transport all at the same time, end-of-life batteries contain many valuable resources, and we must be able to reuse those critical raw materials instead of relying on third part on third countries for supplies. Uh, Teresa Ribera, Spanish Minister for Economic Ecological Transition, said of this new regulation. The new the new rules will promote the competitiveness of European industry and ensure new batteries are sustainable and contribute to a green transition. Fred Nard in the chat says, "Are tri wing screws considered user replaceable?" Actually, no. Yeah, because tri wing um, screwdrivers are not as readily available as Phillips head screwdrivers or slot head screwdrivers. That's why Nintendo uses them, so that yeah, you so can't you just can't like go it. into your dad's toolbox and. So, so uh, the Verge also reported on this, and part of their article said, according to the draft version of the Eco Design Regulation on the EU's website, batteries should be replaceable with no tool, a tool or a set of tools that is supplied with the product or spare part. So it could be tri wing if it if the tool comes with a tri wing, yeah. if the battery comes with a tri wing, which it could. I've gotten stuff that comes with tri. They're very yeah. cheap. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, if you get a uh, replaceable uh, hall sensing Joy-Con, it comes with the screwdrivers. Yeah. Uh, or basic tools. So, a regular screwdriver yeah. counts as a basic tool. Yeah. I mean, like, in this day and age, it's not hard to, like, you can just go on Amazon and, like, look for one. Yeah. But, like, back in the 80s and 90s, nobody had a tri-wing screwdriver. Yeah. Or, so, or, the, or like, the tamperless one. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of yeah different tools that were hard to get, but... Once the internet happened, we just bought it from iFixit, yeah. and then everybody had, you know, tamper-proof screws drivers. Yeah. Um, now, other things that I think might not be covered is, uh, right now, a lot of portable devices, the batteries are glued in with some sort of yeah. adhesive, and that, I don't think, is going to be covered under this regulation. I think it is. Okay. Because... They're they're specifically saying user replaceable. Mm -hmm. That would imply that they want the device to 
they want the user to be able to actually remove the battery from the device and replace it with a brand new one easily. I I, I think we're in agreement. I, when I said glue will not be covered, I mean like oh, companies they, won't be able to use the glue. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, because that is not you need you need to use a tool that most people don't have. Like yeah. like uh, I mean, you can use a credit card and a freaking hair dryer, but it's a yeah. it's a huge it, pain it in the really ass. Really is. Yeah. It's it's not mm -hmm. easy uh, on most of these things. So I will say on the RG three five XX, the battery is replaceable, but it's 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 got double sided tape, like the shittiest yeah like scotch double-sided tape and like that's probably well fine. i can tell you on an iphone 6 it's got two tape strips and it's got two tabs you're supposed to pull the tabs in order for the battery to come out those tabs break very easily oh. and they are super strong so you'll be sitting at the with the credit card trying to pry it out in a hair dryer for a very long <laughs> time and keep in mind iphone batteries are not good with heat <laughs> no no you you like the way to get the adhesive off of the battery is to heat it up and you're not supposed to heat up exactly, a battery yeah. so that i wouldn't consider that user replaceable no, absolutely in, by any means yeah. and i and i think some of the proof is that if you want to replace a battery doesn't like for for an, an apple product don't they give you tools yeah nowadays they'll give you tools but they give you the most you know convoluted like setup you, yeah. you buy like they basically send you like a ten thousand dollar kit they do that in order to scare you away from wanting to do it yeah. but now they're implicating themselves yeah by having all of these crazy expensive tools and then and, and like convoluted tools they're trying to discourage you from using it but that's going to prove to the eu that normal people can't do this yeah and this isn't normal tools they're giving you crazy tools yeah so that's uh, this is i can only see this as a win i don't understand the other argument when i look at it i think of i think the steam deck has a very simple easy to replace battery it does have adhesive yeah uh i haven't actually tried to replace it but i have removed the cable and it's super easy yeah. to get in there and remove the cable and stuff it, and it uses actually regular screws right um so that's a good example it's also a weird shape so okay, yeah. and, and and they provide it for you right like like, like you can just go buy it uh, so that's good. Also, I think of the DS Lite battery. Yeah. There's a little door. You take it right out. No reason that the, the Switch can't have something like that. I think the analog pocket is another good example because a lot of these devices, the battery is like like integrated into the motherboard in mm -hmm. a way. Like you open an iPhone, it's like the motherboard and the battery is right on top of it. Yeah. The pocket, uh, you unscrew the back and it's just the battery. Like the motherboard is still protected by like the the plastic housing, so if you're worried about like you know damaging the motherboard, you can separate the battery from the motherboard and just connect it you know via one connection. I was you know, kind of like what they used to do in the '80s with double A batteries. I was trying to find a, a picture of the battery, but it didn't yeah. didn't come up that easy. Uh, I this think is, uh, your buddy Elliot did a video on it. Oh yeah, he yeah. the second it came out, he he ripped it apart. Yeah. Um. This is uh, not for handheld specifically. This is for portable devices. Yeah. yeah. So, so phones too. And I think yeah. that's probably I mean, that's arguably main, more yeah. important. This is uh, along the same lines of their, this happened a while ago, but um, self portable devices manufactured after a certain day have to start having USB-C ports on it. So everyone yeah. thinks the next iPhone is going to just be a USB-C iPhone. Yeah. Or have no ports exactly. which would be very annoying yeah i do hope that it's usb i'm gonna get the next iphone because i'm okay. i'm i have the 11 so do so i I'm, I'm going to run that bitch to the ground <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready for for another one um yeah one of the tweets that i got about this was saying how uh it's a win for consumers but having non-removable batteries allows them to like make them different shapes and make them weird and put you put them in like different spots uh, on the internal components to charge different things like like something about how you can use them to uh uh form fit a design a little better i don't know of an example where that's true because again the steam deck battery is an l shape yeah and you can take that out well, I know the iPhone, like some iPhone batteries are also L-shaped, but again, like those, you, I mean, you need the know-how to do it, but those can be removed too. 
Th- there's cases where uh, they've developed flexible batteries. Yeah. But I don't know any popular devices that have flexible batteries. No, They're yeah, all like, pretty yeah. much using these same uh, batteries. They're all using yeah. this, these same I sets think, of batteries. You know, it, it's not that the EU like wants everyone to start using AA batteries. I'm pretty sure like the law will state that as long as the company makes that particular battery available yeah. and easily replaceable by the end user, mm-hmm. like they could sell a proprietary battery. They just have to make it readily available. Like you have you have to be able to walk into a store and buy it. Yeah. So but- if they want to make L shaped batteries or you know Z shaped batteries or whatnot, they can. It just has to be available. And also too, that would open up the market for like third party manufacturers to make their versions and if they don't make them available the, the china will have a replacement immediately yeah. uh, and 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 honestly a lot of devices use very similar batteries yeah so uh, th- there's no reason it can't be like this w- one of the design issues is that a lot of devices uh look very clean and seamless and mm-hmm. you're going to need to develop a door you're going to need to have a door in it and that could look ugly yeah. in some cases too fucking bad yeah i'd much rather be able to Oh, if you use a phone, you got a case on it anyway. Who gives yeah. a shit what the back looks like? Well, we've seen, um, you've seen the Fair Phone, right? No, that's a completely uh, user, not user upgradable. It's it's a phone that like users can like remove the battery itself. They can change the. Oh, I haven't camera. seen this in a long time. Yeah, yeah, the back just slides off, and it looks seamless. It looks fine. Look at this guy. This guy's happy with his Fair. This guy's phone. happy with his yeah. Fair Phone. How much is a Fair Phone? Uh, I think they're pretty expensive now i mean anything where you can swap out the parts is kind of it's kind of up there yeah i mean anything like, modular gets i was looking at framework it. laptops and those things are expensive there's like no difference between those and only regular laptops and this is in euros excuse me <laughs> 650 dollars. that's okay. not that's not that's bad. Like terrible that's not bad and and you know you can expect to be able to upgraded in the future yeah so that's kind of cool yeah but it's it's android and uh i need i need freaking iMessage. yeah although i did hear listen to this listen oh, to no. This bullshit. oh no oh no you can uh have iMessage on an android phone hmm. you just need a mac computer that is on all of the time <laughs> to run as a as a server that's like the middleman yeah so that will be your iMessage device that everybody like texts Mm -hmm. and then it'll fling it to your phone okay that sounds like a huge pain in the ass yeah except i have a mac computer that's on all the time 24 7 that's working as a server right so i could do that right are you going to do no because it'd be much easier to just have an iphone (laughs) exactly and there's very little that is swaying me to want to jump to android yeah other than games and i could just I have, you know, mm-hmm. Android devices that I can play games on. Anyway, uh, what are the other arguments that people have against I've, this? Not, I mean, not in this article, but I've seen it uh, back when uh, user replaceable batteries were being phased out mm-hmm. originally. Uh, a big thing is waterproofing and dust proofing. If, yeah. you, if you glue the whole phone shut, that increases um, its waterproofness and like it helps keep dust out of it. Okay, that's actually a pretty decent that's argument. That's a valid argument, but at the same time... That's the only thing that made me okay with them taking the uh, headphone jack out. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, you shouldn't be dropping your phone in water anyway. <laughs> and, you know, dust Stop is, being careless dust is easy to clean out with a, a can of uh, air. And, like... I are... use a toothpick. Yeah. To, 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 so, like, the, the, the lightning port always gets oh, always yeah messed up and it seems like the cables messed up so everybody always messes yeah. around the cable you take a toothpick a wooden toothpick yeah and you get all this dust out and it works also too like you know there's like rubber gaskets that you can use so like as long as they're installed properly it can make a phone waterproof True. there are other ways to make a phone waterproof yeah put the gluing put, it make shut. the door rubber or you know you like making money sell a waterproof case you think of that <laughs> waterproof case 100 bucks <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of ways think around it. Think different, motherfucker. They're going to have to think about it. They're going to yeah. have to do something right. different. Uh, it's going to be a little harder for them, but way better for us. Yes. So who gives a shit? Yes, like these are like, you know, I well, I know we're talking about like Nintendo and like Steam, but like really Apple. I mean, they're the <laughs> smartest people in the world. They're the smartest engineers in the world. 
they can think of something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What was I getting at? I don't remember. I'm I'm trying to look through my tweets now and see. Again, they could just give you a screwdriver in it. It doesn't have to yeah. necessarily. Doesn't mean that all of the devices from now on are going to be regular screwdrivers. Like yeah. it could still be TriWing or some bullshit. But they they'll just in the package with the battery they'll give you mm-hmm. something with it. What I don't understand is um, this is for like a sustainability thing, yeah. like because they want you to be able to replace the battery, so you're not you know wasting. There's not a lot of e waste. Yeah. You're creating more batteries now. <laughs> True. <laughs> there's but... more. There's gonna. You're making companies make batteries available. There's gonna be a stockpile of batteries. Now. Well, there's gonna be a stockpile of batteries, but I think the incentive is to also like get more people to recycle the batteries they already have. Yeah. So rather than throw out an entire device because of the battery, you can now just replace the battery. You know, maybe, maybe they'll set up an exchange program where you that, send well, that's your battery the back to Nintendo and they'll send you a new you one. You have to make the company also recycle the right. wasted battery now. Yeah. Because it's not easy to recycle a battery. No, I mean, like some stores will have a bin to recycle. Best not, Buy does. Best yeah. Buy does, Target does, but not all of them. Yeah. So you, you got to start rolling that out more. Yeah. You know, it used to be back in the day... The reason why there are five, there's five cent deposit on soda bottles is because you like the the companies would ask you to bring the bottles back, like Coca Cola and Pepsi would ask you to bring the bottles back, and you'd get five cents back. Hmm. Now it's just a way to like you know punish you for not recycling. Yeah, they found out it's cheaper to just make the bottles again. Yeah, and it was too expensive for us to recycle the bottles, so we sent yeah. them all to China. Now China doesn't want them. Right. Well, now China wants them again. I don't know. I don't know who's they want buying them again. I don't know who's buying our glass. We don't. We yeah. We don't recycle glass anymore. Do we no, recycle no, glass? No. Now we recycle glass again. That's so hard. Yeah. It really is. It's so it's, hard around here. It's, I hate it. I can't keep up with this bullshit. <laughs> so you just throw it in the recycling mm-hmm. with everything else. Yes. Okay. I. I don't think the recycling bin matters i don't think anything happens with the shit we put in the recycling i think they take it and they throw it in the furnace with everything else i know and most places don't have recycling they just tell you all to put it in the regular trash and i get a letter on my garbage can Mm -hmm. every other week so they they yell at me for what some dumb shit too much dust there was too much dust in the garbage oh god it got all over us can't handle the dust no too gross. Ugh. Too gro- the gar- Your garbage was too gross for us. Now, now I know they're picking a fight with you. Yeah, That's it's, how I know. it's fucked up. Yeah, it's them and PlayStation 5 fans. I've never, yes, I've never <laughs> heard anybody else getting yelled at from their garbage men over no. such dumb shit before. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, that's it. We're, 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 this is a big win for right to repair. Yes. So... This is uh, it's it's only EU though it's not America. Well, the th- the thinking is because it's the same thing with the uh, iPhones and USB C. The thinking is it would just be easier for companies to make one version that you know facilitates the needs of every country worldwide rather than just make the EU version of the Switch or the American version of the Switch and the Japanese version of the Switch. Yeah, the problem is, will the company find it's uh, easier for them? to make one version or will they find that it's more uh profitable for them to make a battery version in the eu and force us to throw our whole device out everywhere else i don't because that is very profitable for them for apple specifically right. to be like if the battery sucks throw the whole but thing the, in the amount garbage. of r&d you have to like do to now make two different versions of the same exact thing yeah you know, I don't think I don't think that's going to be worth it for them. Well, I know that like uh, whenever I think of other, especially the EU getting one version of a di- device versus mm-hmm. the whole rest of the world, I think of cameras with the uh, record limit. Yeah. Uh, for some reason in the UK, if your camera can record over 30 minutes, it's classified as a video camera. And then there's all sorts of different regulations that you need to have. Yeah. And companies like Canon will do they'll release the same thing across the board they don't give a shit but companies like sony will 
have a UK version and then uh and then a, an American version where the American version will record endlessly and the European version will right. or the UK version will. Well, that sounds more like a, a software thing rather True. than a hardware thing. True. True. You know, also, also in Japan, phones are forced to have a shutter sound because <laughs> they're creeps. Yeah. Um, and here we don't have that. So. I, it, it's possible it's only in the EU, and if that's the case, I'm going to want EU devices. Yeah. From I think on. a lot of people will find a way to get the EU version. That'll the be devices. the better yeah. version. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Anyway, that's that. Yes. What happened to my alerts? You're supposed to tape a dollar under the trash lid as a tip. That's a good idea. They won't see that. They no. they rip the lid off, they throw it, they dump the garbage, and they one hand. Yeah. <laughs> take down this whole damn set uh jeffrey Sorensen, thanks for the 27 months sorry i'm late hi hello thanks for paying the late hey. fee uh okay now we can talk about how we got gex back yes you're all welcome <laughs> uh this was i think this was the day after the podcast? this was the yeah. day after i was out and about having a grand old time and then i saw gex yeah uh, Limited Run Games had a big showcase. They revealed another big slate of games that are going to get physical releases on not just Switch, but also PS4. And I think also they do Xbox now, uh, along with reprints of legacy for legacy systems like the NES and War. So it was a whole showcase of games that they're coming out with. Um, first, they, they showed off the Castlevania Advance Collection. That's already out digitally, but they're doing a physical version of it. That it, I've been playing uh, Circle of the Moon. Yeah. So this is cool, but it's already out. It yeah. just now it's physical. Yeah, and I don't that's, really care the, about the physical. thing is limited to run is like they mostly do physical things. Yeah, I mean that's good for like people who love physical media and preservation. Uh, sure, but most of the stuff is already available or will also be available digitally. Uh, like if the advanced collection is already out. Uh, but also they announced the uh, Rise of the Triad, the Ludicrous Edition. Never uh, heard of it. Rise of the Triad, I think, was one of the as, um '90s PC shooter. Okay. Not to be confused with Shadow Warrior, which was the Duke Nukem clone, but with uh, offensive Asia stereotype. That I know because yeah. they re-released that. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, Kamujao. Not the last time we're going to mention offensive Asian stereotypes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Kamujao Romelina Scarlet Symphony. I know I didn't pronounce that right. What is what is that no Japanese? I, I have no, no idea. No, it can't be. I have no idea. The ultimate collection of Tiger Heli and the Cobra Twins. Uh, the making of Karateka. All right. Now, I know what... Oh, sorry. Karateka. I know what Karateka is. Karateka is the first game from Jordan Mechner, the creator of Prince of Persia. Oh. And it was like one of the, it was like one of the proto fighting game style games. And this is not only going to be in uh, contain four different versions of the game, but it's going to include an interactive documentary on the making of the game. Okay. So that's cool. It's not just a game. It's a museum piece. So is the game called Karateka? Karateka. Karateka. It's pronounced Karateka. Karateka. Yeah. Okay. And then, okay. Okay. I understand. Yes. I understand. Uh, now we're getting turtles. Not a game, but uh, Limited Run will be releasing the soundtrack for oh, all the Retro Turtle games on CD, vinyl, and cassette. Because cassettes are back, baby. That's crazy. Yeah. Do we get to see what the cassette looks like? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's green. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's actually cool. The Turtle soundtracks are awesome. Very good. They are so good. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yay. Yeah. El, Sh El Shot. Oh, what the fuck is Should die. Should die. That's it. El Should die. Uh, what is this? Dungeon Dungeons Aether? of Aether, yeah. Uh, Clock Tower. This is a big one. This is a game has never been released in the U.S. This is a uh, Japanese uh, Super Famicom survival horror game uh, where a man with big scissors like comes after you and you have to just hide from him. You have no defense. <laughs> I, I have heard of this. It's yes. a very popular uh, Japanese uh, Super Famicom survival horror game, and it is coming to the Switch okay. thanks to Limited Run Games and Way Forward. Then we have Chikori, which Chikori. I've heard of. Yes, I've a heard of that. Tale. Uh, Shantae Advanced Risky Revolution. Now, this... So there was Shantae on the Game Boy Color, and then there was Shantae Risky's Revenge on the Game Boy Advance. 
In between those games, there's supposed to be another game, Shantae Advanced Risky's Revolution, that got canceled in favor of Risky's Revenge. They're bringing, they're finally making Risky's Revolution. Uh, and not only are they bringing it to modern systems, but they're also going to do a GBA cart. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really cool. In the past, they've released Shantae games, but it's only been like a GBA box. Yeah. And you pay for like $40 for a box. Well, they think they re-released the original Shantae and that came on a Game Boy Color card. Okay. Yeah. So this is following along those lines. Because I remember E wanted me to get him Shantae at the limited run booth at some convention and it was $40 and it was just a box. Yeah. I don't think the game was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, that's cool. I might get it if it's a physical yeah, it's Game an Boy actual cartridge. Game Boy GBA cart. Uh, okay. Next up is Azeret, the Jewel of Faramore. Cool. Uh, plumbers don't wear ties. Okay. Do you don't know what this game no. is? Okay. Um, so there was in the '90s there was the 3DO video game system. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a game for it. It is basically the uh, the Plan Nine of outer space of video games. It is awful it's um it's a really shitty fmv game where it's oh. not even full motion it's just still images okay and it's a weird sex comedy oh no um and it's coming back baby oh boy <laughs> this is the monkey's paw we gave you gex and we're also getting plumbers <laughs> don't wear ties but but this is like this is what we talk about when we say games should be made available like regardless of quality because you can just buy Plan 9 from Outer Space. You can watch it even though it's a crappy movie. Mm -hmm. Can't do that with Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Now you can. Now, now you, can you can preserve video game history yes. for better or for worse. That's Hey, man. History is ugly. What do you want from me? There's a lot of games here. Yeah, this isn't even all of them. I This article doesn't even mention the Jurassic Park collection that they're doing. Of oh. like all the... NES, SNES, and uh, Game Boy Jurassic Park I games. largely did not care about any of this. I didn't know about this until it was happening. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, I didn't I know I just it was saw either. all the tweets and stuff. I just saw, yeah, I saw all the tweets, and the big one was Gex, yeah. and then I saw all this other crap, and I was like, not very interested. Also, limited run, like, it's cool that we have physical stuff. A lot of people like to collect yeah. stuff, but they always release games physically, like, a little too late. Like, yeah, the game's already out digitally. Like, I'm just going to play it digitally. Like, we are just now getting a physical, like, like a limited run edition of Alien Isolation on Switch. The game's been out on Switch for years. Yeah. So. Same thing with the Castlevania collection. Yeah. That's been out for a while. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, there's a there's a lot of other games. The Jurassic Park collection, uh, Tomba, uh, Gargoyles for Genesis is coming back. That's cool. Yes. That's a big deal. Um, but, of course, the big the big news is that the Gex trilogy is coming to modern systems here it is so, so that's a that's crazy because yes last week on the podcast we were talking about uh we're talking about preservation game preservation how 87 percent of retro games are currently not available and this probably made a significant dent in that percentage <laughs> Not like a whole percent yeah, but you know now, like now this is like, good 86 like percent yeah and somebody in the chat said uh what if the game has problematic content and i mm -hmm. said well then they got to do something like what warner brothers does and put a disclaimer in the front yeah. and then i said good luck releasing gex re-releasing yep. gex and then the very next day <laughs> they decided they they're going to re-release a gex not just not just one gex game all three so limited run doesn't really they just port games right they don't really do anything with the game they're itself. not exactly a publisher no i mean they're no they're, they are a publisher, they're, a publisher they're, not they're, not, a they're not a developer yeah so what is this is just gonna be gex just the rom just poured uh, it over yeah when i, I don't think, up, i don't it's think it's just, gonna be a full remake i mean they have to have like a like a title screen that says yeah. like gex trilogy so well, you pick the game you want to play being right made in the car with the carbon engine which i know is modern vintage gamers proprietary engine for getting older games running okay. on modern hardware so there's probably some sort of like tinkering that has to be done I, my understanding uh, it sounds like that's just an emulator okay but i mean it's probably a very robust uh, yeah nice it's gotta emulator. be because gex is a playstation era game and they think the carbon engine is also doing uh what the hell it, i think the carbon engine is also doing plumbers don't wear ties which is not a playstation game yeah so but yeah, my um, the reason I'm asking this is because they they gotta 
put a disclaimer on the front or yeah. not. Or no, not. They, they don't have not, to, yeah. but so I, I w- they should probably do it for plumbers. Don't wear ties. <laughs> True. I, I talked about this because I know that Gex has some problematic content that just yeah. hasn't aged well. And then I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it is. I just remembered watching Donkey's video on it. And there was, you know, Gex doesn't shut the fuck up. Yeah. And he was saying some weird shit. And, uh, I found a post from 2021 by, on uh, Reset Era by Mechanos, who said, who played, who was playing Gex at the time. Are we playing Gex Enter the Gecko for the first time in over 20 years? And you, and you have the Kung Fu Theater levels, which are an obvious mashup of Chinese and Japanese imagery, m- mixing together Chinese culture with Japanese samurai and ninja elements. Sure, okay, you say. That's obviously culturally insensitive, but is it racist? I mean, it's just, like, misinformed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of Gex's many wonderful lines is, me love you long time. (laughs) (laughs) In a type of accent and riff in this level. And others I'm forgetting at the moment. So, yeah. There's... I don't think that's the end, but that's just an example of of some shit that's not going to translate well. I mean, they they got one of two options. You either take it out or you leave it in. And if, honestly, if you take it out, that's probably the worst of the... Yeah, I, I'm i not su- suggesting take it out, but uh, do a Warner Brothers type yeah. disclaimer yeah, thing you up front. It. Say, like, we acknowledge this is probably not great, but we yeah. do want to preserve it for, for history's yeah. sake. Because the world was fine with that in the yeah. 90s. We would watch that and be like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... Uh, anyway sorry guys sorry that we got gex back or no you're welcome everybody you're all we're sorry and also you're welcome yeah anyway uh that's it yes that's it for that that was fun that was a fun time yeah Yeah. again i didn't even know they were having a showcase me neither i just saw i saw jurassic park oh okay gargoyle okay tomba okay gex what yeah yeah. I, I I only saw Gex yeah. and then I saw a bunch of other crap and I was like I don't care about any of this. Now I'm interested in Shantae because yeah. I I'd, I'd like a to try another Game Boy yeah. Yeah, Game Boy Advance, yeah, yeah Game, Game Boy, Boy Advance, Advance yeah. uh these days. Uh also that's a modern vintage gamers like thing. Yeah. Anyway, we can move on. Yes. To everybody's favorite topic here on yes. the Lost End podcast. Sony, Microsoft and Activision. Yes. So the United States of America, God bless this country, uh, basically said, yes, Microsoft, you can go forward with acquiring Activision Blizzard. Um, They are currently working with the UK, the CMA in the UK, to push forward with the deal. They didn't win their appeal, but they're currently working with the the CMA on how they could move forward with the deal. Um, And that in turn extended the deadline, and they will be able to continue and try to figure it out. But the big news... I think this is pretty big, is that Phil Spencer tweeted, we are pleased to announce that Microsoft and PlayStation have signed a binding agreement to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation following the acquisition of Activision Blizzard. We look forward to a future where players globally have more choice to play their favorite games. So after months of no, Sony finally said yes. They wore them down. So... There's two reasons that this might have happened. The first reason is maybe they came to an agreement and 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 maybe there were some terms in the deal that Sony didn't like mm-hmm. that they wanted Microsoft to fix and then they could finally come to an agreement. Yeah. What I think really happened was the deal was fine and Sony just didn't want to sign it because they wanted to get it blocked yeah. by the FTC and the European Union and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So now that we're winding down all of the lawsuits and stuff. Yeah. PlayStation's like, fine, we need Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> so so we will sign whatever deal mm-hmm. you want. They were just playing a charade to to make it seem like uh they were uh suffering, you know. Yeah. Someone uh else talked about how just how much Call of Duty meant to PlayStation. Or yeah, I, yeah. and I think it was like eighty mil, eight hundred million dollars in revenue to Sony from Call of Duty. Sony makes eight hundred and eight hundred million dollars from Call of Duty sales. I, I, well, now I'm trying to find it, but I remember hearing that um, 
Call of Duty is like the top three best-selling games on PlayStation consoles mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So if they make that exclusive, Sony's kind of really fucked. Yeah. So that makes sense. I mean, every year they come out with Call of Duty and it always sells like an insane amount. Yeah. So. And they also have a deal with Nintendo. So yeah. Call of Duty will be on Nintendo consoles too in some capacity. We don't know exactly what, but that'd be good. Now, uh, this this tweet from Phil Spencer. Now, the other deals that they made with um, Nintendo and Steam and like other places, they, they keep saying that it's 10 years. Like, we're committed to 10 years. And initially, when they made this offer to Sony, they said it's the same thing, 10 years. This tweet from Phil does not mention a time frame. Yeah. This leads me to believe that the new that this deal that they hashed out might be forever. <laughs> that like be- the only way that they that Sony would back off is if they would guarantee that Call of Duty comes to PlayStation consoles forever. I think I I don't think companies deal in forever terms. I think that would be insane to sign a forever deal. Because things happen. You, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe Call of Duty doesn't exist in 10 years. Well, if maybe if I read down the article a bit more, I would understand. Well, Microsoft's initial <laughs> announcement doesn't mention 10 years for Call of Duty on PlayStation. Uh, Kari Perez, the head of global communications at Xbox, confirmed the 10-year commitment to The Verge. Perez later confirmed to The Verge that the deal is only for Call of Duty. Uh, that makes the deal similar to a 10-year agreement between Microsoft and Nintendo. Uh, but not the various deals Microsoft has struck with NVIDIA and other cloud gaming platforms to bring Call of Duty and other Xbox and Activision games to rival services. So it is for 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think that's a reasonable amount of time. It's a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And they can always like re-up at the end of the 10 years. They're going to. And PlayStation's going to have a little, a little team hidden away somewhere. Yeah. That has 10 years to come up with their own Call of Duty. <laughs> I mean, 10 years, they can do it. Yeah, 10 yeah. years is plenty of time. But what the, what they'll probably end up doing is saying you have three years to come up with the yeah. new Call of Duty. <laughs> and then they're going to fail. And then uh, Call of Duty will be here to stay. Yeah. Selling the same game every year yep. for billions of copies. <laughs> uh, and I'm still, and I literally just Googled when is, where is Warzone Mobile? And we're still waiting for it. Yeah. Because that's what I assume is coming to the Switch. Yeah. The mobile version of Warzone, which will be fine. I mean, they made it sound like they're going to try and do a, a similar experience on Switch that is on Xbox and PlayStation. The next Switch, maybe. Yeah. I mean, the new Warzone, I mean, even the old Warzone is, the old Warzone is very poorly optimized. So right. I'm assuming that Mo- Warzone Mobile is like a completely different mm-hmm. experience. Uh, the new Warzone is also pretty poorly optimized. I don't think the new Warzone can run on Switch hardware at all. Right. It has a hard time running on low-end PC hardware. So they have a lot of work to do, even if there's a new Switch coming out next year. I mm-hmm. don't think the new Warzone is going to work on that. They got they got a lot of work to do. Yeah. It'll be running at less than 30 frames per second, 720p, you know, all that nonsense. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I mean, this is great. It's, it's, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't. I still don't know how to feel about uh, Microsoft acquiring Activision. It, 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 like, it, it is very weird. Like, we know this is something we should not be okay with. We know yeah. this is something we should not root for. Um, but by the same time, you know what the problem is? It's because it's Activision. Because they're they're a shitty company run by a shitty man, and it was done <laughs> a shitty, shitty little man, <laughs> and they've done shitty things to their employees. Yeah. And, you know, Microsoft... But that's why I want them to be acquired because I right. don't want Activision well, to be exactly. run by a shitty exactly. guy anymore. Well, like Microsoft, like they're not, you know, they're not that great either, but they've presented themselves as a much more friendly, welcoming yeah. environment yeah. than, you know, than what has... Because like this this news that like Microsoft wants to acquire Activision was like within a month after, you know, all the sexual harassment scandals in Activision Blizzard like was revealed. So, like, the timing was, like, here comes Microsoft as the white knight to, like, save all the Activision employees. I've liked what Microsoft has been doing the past couple of years more than most other game companies. Right. Uh, They've had a lot of misses. Uh, Halo wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've done a lot of weird shit. Uh, They've tried to do some stuff that would have been cool but failed miserably, like... uh, 
uh, I don't know, the way that you like upgrade games from Xbox One to Xbox Series. Like they tried yeah. to do something really cool, but then nothing, it didn't catch on. And then it was still really confusing to do it anyway. Well, it's still better than the way you do it on Sony. Yeah. On PlayStation. No, I agree. Um, but yeah, I like a lot of what what they've been doing with their business model. Again, it's not perfect, but it's a lo- hell of a lot better than the way Activision has been run recently. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of on board with a lot of this uh, acquisition in terms of just capitalism. Yeah. Very scary to yeah. have one company own so much yeah. of, of, of one, uh, of, of one, uh, the, the sphere. Yeah. Like Especially it. like, because with news that like Microsoft has bought is buying Activision and they bought so many other companies previously. And you know, the news that like they were thinking about buying other companies like, sega and square and whatnot people look like keep saying like oh who else should microsoft buy yeah but like the companies that microsoft have bought haven't really proven themselves yet yeah like we'll get like maybe a game or two from like someone but they're not like the big games that we expect and when we do get the big games it's redfall you yeah know? i think that uh microsoft doesn't really know what to do with all of these studios yet yeah that they're they're still trying to figure it out and games take a long time to develop so it's gonna take a long time for us to see what a microsoft owned studio is gonna do that's different Mm -hmm. like like because of redfall they were talking about how now they want to have all of these studios kind of talk to each other to help each other out on certain things that's going to change a lot of the development path of a lot of games that were in right. development before Microsoft even purchased them. Yeah. So it's going to take us like another five years to see what this shit even means. Yeah. They had plans to buy Sega and Bungie if Blizzard deal did not go through. I read yeah. I, I right before this started, I watched a video of a guy from Sega say that uh, they have no plans at this time. Yeah. But of course, yeah, you, know, I don't think you don't know what that means. That could mean anything. I mean, I don't think Sega wants to be bought. And they can't buy Bungie. It's owned by Sony. That's yes. I don't think that Sony would ever let that go. No. Yeah, no. that would be crazy. Mm-hmm. In the past, I, I remember hearing that Microsoft did want to buy Bungie before Sony yeah, did. Yeah, they I wanted think. to buy Bungie back. Yeah. but, but uh, Sony got to them first. Yeah, Sony got to them, so yeah. that, that's just not going to happen anymore. That was a big loss for them. They really yeah. fucked that up. Yeah, because especially because like you know Halo kind. Con- but I guess like they wouldn't want to go back because Microsoft would just make them work on Halo. Bungie's had a really weird uh, history. Yeah, like uh, starting off on Mac, then going to Microsoft for the Halo exclusivity. Yeah, and then now and, and then going independent. Uh, no, they were they yeah. went independent. Then they went to Activision and got like uh fucked into Making, doing a lot of weird shit with destiny yeah well they got fucked into doing a sequel to destiny yeah because they, they didn't want to do yeah they had a roadmap for destiny that made it seem like destiny was a forever game and then here's destiny 2 and i was like what that yeah. wasn't supposed to happen and i did not like destiny 2 as much as i like destiny 1 and then uh they went independent again and uh then they got bought by playstation and my understanding is PlayStation is make is letting them kind of do their own thing. Yes, it's like surprisingly autonomous for a Sony owned uh, company. Yeah, because Marathon's going to be on Xbox. Yeah, uh, so that's cool, and that's probably a lot of the reason that they want that they were comfortable getting acquired by yeah. by Sony because Bungie has a history of kind of having a corporate overlord that they don't want to listen to, and yeah. that's why they've changed hands so many times mm-hmm. okay uh speaking of microsoft yes but we all knew this was coming but we didn't know when and we didn't know how but ladies and gentlemen xbox live is dead long live xbox game pass core uh, today or yesterday this is from the official microsoft blog we are continuing our commitment to give players more choice and value by introducing Xbox Game Pass Core, launching on February. Uh, sorry, why did I say February? Launching on September 14th, September 14th, the day after Bob's birthday. Fuck Hell you, yeah. Bob. You oh. don't get a birthday present from Microsoft. <laughs> you get your shit taken away. Yeah. Game Pass Core is the evolution of Xbox Live Gold. Game Pass Core will give players access to our advanced multiplayer network, a selection of 
a select collection of over 25 games to play with friends around the world and exclusive member deals, all for $10 a month or $59.99 for the year. Okay, so 25 games to play with friends around the world. Was that already available in Xbox Live Gold? No. Okay. So basically what they're doing is instead of giving you two free games a month, they're going to give you 25 games total. And I, I'm assuming they'll swap out. Yeah, they'll swap out. I think they said it, uh, later they say like it swaps out like uh, two to three times a year. They'll change up the games. I'm comfortable but, with that, especially after the last year or two of just absolute garbage yes. games with gold games. And yeah, so new titles will be added two to three times a year. Uh, f- our launch collection of more than 25 titles from Xbox Game Studios, Bethesda, and our content partners will offer something for everyone to play on Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One consoles. Today, we're confirming the following titles for launch. Um, those titles are Among Us, Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, wow. Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Grounded, Halo 5, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade, Human Fall Flat, uh, Inside, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Psychonauts 2, State of Decay 2, and Elder Scrolls Online, Tamriel Unlimited. That's a decent That's a good, list. good, good collection of games. Like, they're all older games, obviously, but, like, you got a good variety. You got some big names in there. You got some indie darlings they, in there. They couldn't give us Halo Infinite. I, like, at the, like, at the bare minimum, give us Halo. You got Halo 5 Guardians and Halo Wars 2, but come yeah. on. I think Halo Infinite might be too new. Because these yes. these are all, like, Xbox One games. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You're right. Yeah. They are. What's Descenders? I've heard of Descenders. I've heard of it. Oh, it's a bike game. Okay. Is this like Trials? I don't know. I like I like those Trials is games. Good. Okay. Now, what does this mean for you? Who is currently subscribed to Xbox Live Gold? Well, this is what it means. Uh, on September 14th, Xbox Live Gold members will automatically become Game Pass core members with no change in pricing and have immediate access to a new library of over 25 high-quality games. Member deals and discounts will also be a part of Game Pass Core. Games with gold will come to an end on September 1st. There better be a banger. Yes. In August. Keep in mind, PlayStation 3, uh, PS Plus games, the final game was Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm -hmm. And the final 360 game was Portal 2. Shit. So, there's a lot to live up to here. Uh, Players can continue to access any Xbox One game they previously redeemed through Games with Gold if they remain a Game Pass Core or Game Pass Ultimate member. And regardless of subscription status, any Xbox 360 title redeemed via Games with Gold in the past will be kept in a player's library. So even if you're not subscribed to Game Pass anymore, um, any Xbox 360 game you claim will remain in your library. Wait, I'm having a stroke. Regardless of whether or not you're still subscribed, yeah, any 360 game that you claimed during your time as a subscriber will remain in your library. It's a subscriber of gold. Yeah, they stopped doing Xbox 360. Games. Yes, but if you if you cancel your membership, you still get access to the 360 game. Oh, right now, if you cancel your membership, you lose it. No, well. A week ago, if you canceled your membership, no, no, no. Oh, Three, so that's just, they're just this they're is... they're just reminding you okay. that whether or not you're subscribed, if you if you redeem 360 games, you will keep the 360. Okay, games. so that's nothing new. That's just, correct. Okay. They're just reminding you of that. Now you claim your Xbox Gold games every single week, no yes. matter no how matter stupid no, how stupid it is. Yes, exactly. So you have a giant collection of Xbox games right now <laughs> yes. that you just are never going to play. Uh, yeah. So how do you feel about them getting rid of that in favor of this? Um, I mean, I knew it was coming. I kind of, I'm still of the mind that like games with gold and game pass serve two different markets. Mm-hmm. That being said, like it is very clear that they're shifting over to game pass. And so I understand changing it. My question now is, because now we have two different 
Game Pass is for $10 a month. You have Game Pass Core, which gives you multiplayer and only like a handful of games. You have regular Game Pass, which gives you access to the whole library, but no multiplayer. And then there's Game Pass Ultimate, which gives you everything. So are you going to continue your subscription? Because you don't give a shit about really anything but the games of gold. No, I'm going to continue it. Like I, because I like having, I like having the option to play multiplayer. The deals can be pretty sick at times. Okay. Honestly, so I'm going to keep. I'm same thing with PlayStation Plus. I'll keep my PlayStation Plus, you know, regular subscription. Okay. Um. But I'm willing to see like what they do with the. The 25 games now. I want. I I would like to see like how they handle that. What do they cycle the game? What do they cycle out? What do they cycle in? I um, will say though, for one dollar a month more than core mm -hmm. you get the console game pass right but that doesn't come with online multiplayer remember game pass you don't get multiplayer unless you subscribe to game pass ultimate what the fuck you tell me you knew this no yeah no i did not know yeah this. yeah uh, usually when they lay things out like this, it's like you get everything in the previous tier plus you get uh, the, this. Well, that's, you know? that, that's one of my concerns. Like, that's what I was talking about. Because now you have two members, of, two tiers of Game Pass that are essentially the same in price. You know, just $1 difference. Mm -hmm. And like one offers you online multiplayer, but not the full collection of games. One offers you the full collection of games, but not online multiplayer. Yeah, there needs to be like an X like a red X, like you don't get online multiplayer with this version. Well, if you look at the at the picture, you go to Ultimate, and that's where it lists everything. Yeah. So yeah. I think, honestly, I think ten dollars a month might still be too high for core. For core, okay. I think I mean it's still sixty dollars a year, which is a deal, but I think at this point they should lower the price. Because, I mean, it's that question, like, why do you pay for online multiplayer and stuff? But I think the Switch has proven that, like, $30 a year for online multiplayer is more than enough. You know? Yeah, I, th I think that, I mean, Nintendo's model has been great. Like, yeah. like I mean, Nintendo Switch Online, the, the, the quality of the online multiplayer is pretty trash. But that's right. really the developer's fault. Yeah. The ability to play online at all. For twenty dollars a year, like yeah. that's how it fucking should be. Yeah, it shouldn't exactly. be any more than that. Yeah, I think, I think if they cut the price of core in half, mm. and honestly, like, or, or that... give us give us some reasonable games. Like these are pretty decent games, but like, give me a Halo Infinite. Honestly, Throw I was going to say cut the price of core in half, and I'll even take cutting the games list in half. Don't give us as many games. Yeah, I don't need all of these. Because I don't I don't think that right now this is like good value. Yeah. I mean, these are some pretty high profile games, but they are a little older. Yeah. I would like to see some newer day one games on here. Like if they release Well, like that's a, the thing. They they want to save their day one games for like uh regular Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. I know, but could you imagine how many signups you get if you if you're like Starfield's coming to this, yeah. by the way. Or like you release Starfield and you release it on Game Pass Ultimate or whatever, like you normally do, mm -hmm. and then like six months later you're like, "Hey, Starfield's part of Core now." Yeah, that that would be cool. That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That would get people interested. So, I mean, yeah, I knew this was coming. I mean, I have Ultimate anyway, so it's not a big deal. But uh, right, I don't. I mean, who does still have regular old gold right Me. now? Hi. You, I yeah. know, I know you do. I feel like a lot of people still do because I feel like more people, especially at this stage, you know, more people care about just playing the games they want to play rather than having a whole library of games. Yeah. Game pass subscription has plateaued. They've mm -hmm. said, so that leads me to believe that more people are just willing to play games the way they've always played games. Just buy the game and play multiplayer. So I'm assuming you can't stream these games, these no. 25 games. No, this will just be a download situation. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, pour one out for Game Pass. Yeah. Or whatever oh, the fuck it's called. like 20 years of Xbox Live Gold. That's now sad. Yeah. And now it ends.
I wonder when PlayStation Plus will end. <laughs> because that ain't going to last that long. They should just get rid of one of those tiers. They should just be like the essentials and then either extra or premium. The essentials is going to go. That's going to... That's that's no like you can't get rid of because it's the same thing people are going to want to play their online multiplayer and just their online multiplayer here's the thing about paying for online multiplayer it sucks yes but most games now that are online that are like the ones everybody's playing are all free to play right and you don't need a subscription so they got to find a way to lower the price of it to like make it appealing to people Mm -hmm. to want to have Mm-hmm. because yeah ten, sony's the same way it's 60 dollars a year yeah i'll have another oreo it's like it's it's too much in this day and age to pay for online multiplayer like back in the day i understand it was a novelty you were paying for the the quality because xbox's online quality was always better than playstation because you had to pay for it i got i got a star and i got yoshi i got toad and i got a. F- what are the spiky Spiny. Spiny. Got a spiny. Whatever those are called. Yes. Got it? That was uh, in the trailer. Yes. Oh, no. I was going to say from the movie, blue shell! Because if it wasn't obvious, he had a blue shell and he was going to do the blue shell thing from, right. the Mar- from the Mario Kart game the kids play. I understand. Just like Fortnite. Notice we haven't gotten two of the same thing. Yeah. Yet. Well, it says there's 16 designs. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Are there even 16? How many cookies are in a box? I feel like you would know that. It's more than 16. It's more than 16. Yeah. What's the serving size? How many cookies is in a serving? Two, two cookies are a serving size. 12 servings per container. Two cookies. 24. 24. There's 24 cookies in here. Not much more than 16. Yeah. Almost. Okay, I can't All do right. that. <laughs> <sighs> Chat got a little weird. Uh, what Starfield won't be on Game Pass now? I don't know where you got that from. Starfield's on Game Pass. Yeah. Uh, is COD is COD what on Game Pass? It will be when the acquisition goes through. It's currently not on any streaming service, Call of Duty. So that's why I think it's kind of a big win to to have it acquired. All right, let's talk. Let's breeze through some more of this shit. Okay. Uh, what 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 should we talk? What's important here? Uh, what is important? Okay, talk talk to me about this one. Uh, game that required PS5 SSD doesn't need one on PC. I want to hear about. Okay. This. Uh, where did you move the article? I moved it right up under the Xbox Gold. Okay. All right. This is you got to follow me here. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was the poster child of the PlayStation 5's blazing fast solid state drive, but on PC. It doesn't technically need one at all. In a blog post published uh, early on Steam, then removed before showing up on PlayStation's blog, Sony and Insom- uh, Sony Insomniac and lauded port developer Nixies have revealed the game's PC uh, system requirements, which show you can get away with a standard spinning magnetic uh, platter of a traditional hard drive if you're satisfied with the minimum specs. Uh, before you hold this up as the latest proof that PlayStation 5's SSD is unnecessary, you should know. Uh, you should also know that there's another technical innovation at work here: Microsoft's Direct Storage, uh, whose recent version 1.2 added the ability to buffer data from slow hard drives before passing it along to your GPU to rapidly decompress the game assets. In a blog post, Nixie's port of Rift Apart claimed to be the very first game to implement Direct Storage 1.2. And principal programmer Alex uh, Bartholomew's uh, specifically suggested it's the reason you can use a traditional hard drive. So basically, long story short, when Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was coming out, they made a big deal about how the game can only be made with the power of the PlayStation 5 SSD. The, the big deal in the showcase was that you create portals and yeah. you enter the portal and it's a whole new world that instantly renders. Yeah, in real time. Yeah. yeah. And they said that's possible because of the SSD. Right. But now the PC port of Rift Apart can be playable with a regular ass hard drive. Thanks to Microsoft. Thanks to Microsoft. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, Sony. Yeah. So Uh, Flo in the chat says it doesn't need an SSD because the settings are so damn low and shitty. It doesn't take a lot of speed to load. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Like I like the article said, you need it. uh, You can use a hard drive if you're using minimum specs. 
which means you're playing the game at 720p, 30 frames a second. Yeah, so you're not loading in high res textures or yeah. anything. So they will load faster. Yeah. So that makes. I was thinking. I was like, how do you buffer like a like a hard drive load? Mm-hmm. Where that something's got to be able to handle the the speed yeah. differential, but apparently it's just the fact that it's not buffering anything important yeah. so okay um of course if you want to play it at 1080p like you need a solid state drive we're starting to see that now more uh pc games are requiring solid state drive starfield will require a solid state drive right but i do think this is a, a step forward towards i know people are getting rid of hard drives in favor of solid state drives but a lot of people do still use hard drives because they're cheaper and you can get more space for your money yeah so if we see this implemented well here Maybe we can start seeing that down the road where, you know, game makers will implement this technology for, you know, future games to still use hard drives to run off of. Maybe at 1080p. I wonder if I have room in my computer. Modern motherboards these days have a slot for like an M.2 or something. Yeah. I wonder if I have an extra slot in mine because I need... It's nice to have a PC that has like the boot drive and then mm. your gaming drive. Yeah. And I need the gaming drive. Yeah. You know, I'm running out of space in there. I have a gaming drive. I, I have the boot drive and I have a slow hard drive that yeah. has like my Dropbox shit on it. Um, And then on my Steam Deck, I just put a one terabyte in there. Right. Go, go blazing fast. <laughs> um, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Very strange that we're now <laughs> technology has advanced so far. That we don't need the technology anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Not me running out of space on my 8 terabyte external drive. That sounds like a problem. What? That they are you running out of space on 8 terabytes. Oh, yeah. Stop downloading all that shit. You don't need any of the things. <laughs> you, you don't need half of the shit that you have. Just picked up an N64, ba- blazing fast. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, it's true. They didn't have load times. Didn't have, yeah. Loaded things pretty quick. Uh, all right, EA Sports. Something. Okay. Um, EA Sports uh, FC24 on Nintendo Switch will run on the Frostbite engine for the first time, meaning EA isn't just releasing a rebranded version of FIFA 19 again. Oh, so we're finally getting... A different FIFA. Yes. On the Switch? Yes. Okay. Following the game's full reveal on July 13th, Nintendo revealed the rebranded FIFA will finally move Switch players along from the years of essentially reskinned Legacy Editions. The Frostbite engine promises to bring immersive detail to the Switch version of uh, FC24, uh, especially when paired with the game's new playstyles technology that heightens the realism and individuality of each player. Switch players will also get to enjoy what's a, what's easily FIFA and now FC's uh, most popular mode in Ultimate Team, where players can develop their own teams of football legends, uh, now including both men and women. Previous FIFA games on Switch included a limited version of this mode. These updates are a stark difference to EA's prior treatment of the Switch up, uh, versions of its premier football franchise. As illustrated in IGN's review of these games, we awarded the original FIFA 19 a 5 out of 10, and it's on this foundation that EA has released the rest of its Switch offerings. That's crazy. FIFA 20, uh, which was noted as offering nothing but a bare-bones roster update, earned a 4 out of 10, while FIFA 21 and 22 and 23 all earned 2 out of 10 each. (laughs) So wait, what is FC... Versus FIFA. Well, it's essentially the same game. There's their soccer games. I th- I don't think they're using the FIFA license anymore. Okay. So they, I think they're just changing it to FC. Now. I think FC stands for football club. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, but did they used to release two FIFA games a year? It was like FIFA and then it was World Cup. No, I think they only did that when it was the World Cup. No, World Cup was a different game. I thought they lost the FIFA license. Says. Yeah. Makishma. FIFA asked for double the amount of money for the license from the last deal, so EA walked away. Sm- I mean, yeah. f- the games sell a butt ton. Yeah. Like, these are... FIFA games sell a lot. These are probably the most popular games in the world. Yeah. They're very... They're... Uh, wor- globally, 
one of the most popular yeah. yearly releases. Like, you think Madden sure. sells a lot in this country? Like, you ain't got shit Yeah, on go that. outside the country yeah. and you got FIFA. So, I think they'll be safe. Yeah. Not a big deal. I mean, you're losing the brand recognition. But I think all the teams are still will still be there. Yeah. So, like, if you want to play as Manchester United, you'll still be able to play as Manchester United. I watched Ted Lasso. I know soccer. Can you play as them? Yeah. Are they a real team? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, do you think I know anything about fucking soccer, dude? I know Ted Lasso. That's it. I know it's a fictional guy. Is he real? He's not real. Okay. But and the <laughs> and the soccer team he coaches is not real. But all the other teams are real. Wait, you just said Manchester United is Manchester real. United is real. Ted Lasso is not the coach of Manchester. Oh, United. so what's he the coach of? AFC Richmond, and that's not real. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Now, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yes, has an actual has a real team, real soccer, and that's team. real. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's in the game. That'll be okay. in the game because they're yeah. a real soccer team. I understand. Will he be in the game? I don't Are know. Owners in the game? No. Okay. Typically not. Okay. Anyway, Halo Master Chief Collection getting a massive update. Yes, uh, this is actually interesting. Let me open the link. While you do that, Caleb Fox, thanks for the 13 months, just went to New York City for the first time and bought two working Game Boy Advance SPs from a guy on the streets for $10 each. New York is great. Are you sure? <laughs> Check those Game Boy Advances. Yeah, are there drugs in there? Yeah. What the hell? On the street? Yeah. Who's selling Game Boy Advances on the street? Why don't I know about this? I guess I gotta start going into the city. Just, they're just randomly selling... Game Boys. This is flipping Game Boys. <laughs> All right. All right. Halo. Old Halo E3 demos are getting remade for a new update coming to the Master Chief Collection. A talented group of modders is working with 343 Industries, the developers oh. of the Master Chief Collection and Halo Infinite, to bring the iconic E3 demos to players around the world. That is awesome. The Master Chief Collection may have launched in a poor state in November of 2014, uh, but several post-launch updates uh, from 343 have greatly improved the experience. Uh, Halo Combat Evolved through Halo 4 are all included in the Master Chief Collection with several optimizations, over 120 multiplayer maps, and improved Forge mode and seasonal content. Although updates have decreased in scope in the past year, 343 continues to hold community events and share news about its latest projects from the Master Chief Collection. The studio's most recent endeavor involves teaming up with a group of modders to develop and restore old Halo E3 demos. In a new uh, Dig Site Discoveries blog post, 343 and the modding group Dig Site reveal that Halo 2 and 3 E3 demos from two, uh, 2003 and 2006 will be made, remade for the Master Chief Collection. The teams are working together to restore the old content from Halo 2 and 3, uh, the demos of them, uh, making it playable to all players in a free update. According to Dig Site, the development process uh, involves re uh, reconstructing and remaking elements from the demos that weren't, that weren't ready for the game's final release. Uh, these elements include skyboxes, vehicles, in-game arenas, uh, and various textures. Finishing touches are being made to the Halo 2 E3 demo, and the scenario of the Halo 3 E3 demo has been successfully remade. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I like it when a collection has old previously unplayable demos yeah i like it when That's a collection great. is more than just like you know a bunch of games running in an emulator i think yeah. the master chief collection even when it launched and like in a, it launched in a rough state even when it launched was like a premier example of how to do like a re-release collection yeah. like this because they didn't just like port the games over they went above and beyond to like try to include every single thing available yeah and, and, it, and they had it playable in its original state and in its new yeah. shiny state and they've continued to like add to it like they eventually added odst and reach to the master chief collection they keep adding you know lost levels and like developer diaries and things like that and they just kept it going they've kept this game in a better state than the more than halo 5 and halo infinite the two like mo modern halo games yeah you know? Yeah, they, they've they've done a really good yeah. job with the Master Chief Collection, and it seems to be getting better and better every year. Yeah, which is incredible. I'd love to see Nintendo E3 demos. They never do anything with yeah. this. Like, we have those ROMs. Like, they're a, yeah. sometimes 
easy to look up and download but like yeah. i'd love to be able to like play the jankiness of like the, yeah. the what games were like before they were re- released versus what we yeah. ended up getting all yeah. right uh next news the last of us part two update i never finished the last of us part two you really you never did i nope i'm just gonna i still just want to look up the ending on on youtube i mean it's... i got to like the very end oh were you did you get to the part where you beat a babby in the in the water no all right because that's the well ne- i am abby and i'm i don't know I'm fucking doing are you just bullshit. walking through homes and stuff because that you're I'm close a, to the end. I'm pretty far in the Abby okay. storyline. I, I don't think I've reached. Uh, uh, no, wait. I got past the. I think I don't know. I'm pretty far into the. It's been a while. I'm okay. pretty far into the Abby okay. shit. Um, and uh, yeah, I just got bored. I just got really bored of it. Yeah, it's, it that does like weigh on you. I was like, I'm pretty sure I see where this is going, and yeah. I just stopped playing. I, 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 that's one of those games where I decided I was just going to look up the end online. And that's a shame, because I loved the first yeah. game. First game is one of my favorite games of all time. And this just didn't have the same effect The second me. game is what happens when you give somebody... You tell somebody they're a genius, and you let them run wild, and you start to realize, like, oh, you're just... Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's a lot of similar themes and stuff. I, I just, think I think it's just a case of like, they tried to like push what they were working on beyond what they're like, just do have, just take the first game as a starting point. I'm getting there. Hold on. Okay. It's, it's right. hard to take talk. Your time. Take your time. They took the first game as a starting point and they tried to push the first game as far as it can go farther. I think than it can go. And they pushed it to they pushed it beyond its limits i think they took the last of us too far they didn't they took it to the goalpost and they just kept going and everyone was like no you should just want to stay at the goalpost yeah that's what happened they just they took a good idea and they took it too far yeah i think game companies need to learn uh what's an example how about this what's an example of a game that has beloved characters that releases a sequel and is like, fuck you, you can't play as these characters. Metal Gear Solid 2. No, but like, <laughs> so that was largely hated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, what's an example of that happening? Everyone's like, yay. <laughs> yay, I can't, I'm so happy that I can't play as the main characters. Uh, Well, I know in Borderlands 2, you play, like, you don't play as any of the characters from the first game. You play as a whole new set of characters. Yeah, they, but Border, that's... That's like Final Fantasy, Borderlands. They're all they all always have new guys. I'm trying to think that. Well, I mean, I get yeah. I mean, The Last of Us is just one game. Yeah, and then they release another game. Well, I mean, Resident Evil, Resident Evil One had like Chris and Jill, and then the second one had Claire and Leon. Yeah, but then they went back to Jill, and they were like ping pong back and forth. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm looking at it wrong because in The Last of Us. It was just one game, but it, for yeah. some reason, it felt like though that's the franchise is these characters, yeah. you know. Castlevania, yeah. What did Castlevania do? Well, the first two games were Simon Belmont. Because I know I'm not playing as Simon Belmont. No, well, the first <laughs> two games game were Simon Belmont, and then the th- third one, I want to say it was Trevor Belmont, and also you play as Alucard. But then, like, then it changed every game. Because, like, Rondo of Blood, you play as Richter Belmont. Symphony of the Night, you play as uh, Alucard. Circle of the Moon, you play as Nathan something. Nathan Graves? Yeah. Uh, Is it Nathan? Because then there's also Hugh Baldwin. <laughs> Do you pick? I don't know. I don't remember no, picking. No, you play... Uh, let me see. Who's that? This guy. Uh, right. He is the son of Morris Baldwin, training partner of Nathan Graves. Yeah, I, no, think, you, I think he's like the guy that you're like going after. Yeah, no, you play as Nathan Graves in Circle of the Moon. Okay. I think in uh, Aria of Sorrow, you play as Soma Cruz. Yeah, it changes every game. Okay. But like, that's also like, that's an Assassin's Creed thing. Yeah. A lot of game franchises, like they change the protagonist every game. I think what you're talking about is like a beloved character and then all of a sudden like it i'm talking about specifically like the metal gear situation yeah like you have solid snake well i mean this might not count but uh devil may cry when the fourth game came out people in the chat were saying devil may cry yeah the fourth game came out nero was the main character 
Mm -hmm. I don't remember if you can play as Dante in Devil May Cry 4, but people didn't hate that so much. Was it, isn't Nero the same guy? He's like the he same guy. He looks exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know. The best. Oh, oh God. I'm going to. Uh, this is this is going to be offensive. The best description I've heard it was from um, the Zero Punctuation. He's trying to tell the difference between Dante and Nero. And he said, Nero is a pussy. And Dante <laughs> is a cunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I, 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 I understand. I remember this. Yeah. This, this guy now. All right. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm looking at it wrong because I, I for some reason, I think I, but I it feels like The Last of Us is about Ellie and Joel. Well, and yeah. Then, well, the, I think what you're talking about is because The Last of Us Part Two sets it up like it's going to be about Ellie and Joel again. And then they, and then they kill Joel in the first five minutes of Spoilers. the game. Spoilers. Uh, but that's what they do in uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 is, that, is they're like, this is a Solid Snake game. Here's the blonde guy well, for the whole game. <laughs> They don't kill Snake though. Like he's there. No, he's there. And that's the same thing with um somebody there's a different game. Oh, Jedi Academy. Uh instant holograms in the chat said Jedi Academy. Yeah. Uh Kyle Katarin is there the whole time. Yeah. You're with him the You're, whole game. Yeah. So that didn't feel so egregious. Also, you made your own character, so it felt kind of cool. Yeah. I was like cool with that. Yeah. Um but doing a bait and switch, I think, is just never a good idea. Yeah. Like you, when you give the player an expectation to play as a guy, and then you say, "Too bad you're not playing as that guy." Yeah, it's uh, it's just never a good idea. Yeah, it's like an interesting artistic choice, but a lot of people liked Metal Gear Two. I liked Metal Gear. Yeah, 2, Metal but Gear. I think I wanted to play a snake. I think Metal Gear Two. Like once you realize, like what, because like there was a point to it playing as Raiden, and they they say that at the end of the game, like because they were trying to recreate Solid Snake. Mm -hmm. So there was a point to playing as Raiden. Yeah. In Last of Us, playing as Joel, like playing as Ellie, you know, the point was trying to like, we want you to suffer. We want you, we want you to watch your father die, basically. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're talking about this because there's an update in Last of Us 2. In case you wanted to play it, we ruined it for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Uh, in a recent interview with Spanish YouTube channel Blender, the composer of both Last of Us games, uh, Gustavo Santolo, I'll yep. do this. Santa Olala nailed it. Uh, seems to have accidentally shared that a new version of The Last of Us Two is in the works. If you haven't played the second game, um, he actually has a cameo that featured him playing the banjo. Uh, speaking about the cameo, he noted that in in the new editions you could play in the new editions you can make me play certain themes, and well, I can't tell you anything else. Which well, certainly seems to imply a new release is coming. Oh, I did hear about this. They're yes. basically doing The Last of Us Part Two remastered. Okay, like that's a, that was the implication so that I heard. So, is it just like you know a PS Five upgrade to the game you already own, or is it going to be a Last of Us Part One situation where they remake the entire game? I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared of what that answer is because we don't need a remaster of this we fucking didn't, game. We didn't need a remake of the first one. Yeah. Um, Junior Moser in the chat says Assassin's Creed 3's opening twist was good. What was yes, that? I don't remember you that. You play at because um, the main character was Connor, but the opening of the game you play as Connor's father, and it's revealed that he's actually a Templar. Oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, but that you the implication is you're gonna play as Connor or or the guy. You and you eventually do. You eventually do. Yeah. yeah, you just play a different guy. That's fine because yeah. you, your expectation is you're gonna play as another guy, and then you do. And again, Assassin's Creed, like it's set up. I mean, originally they did a bad job of this, but it's set up like every game you play as a different character. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway, was that it for this? No, well, I think yeah. we kind of nailed it. So we might be getting a new Last of Us too. Yay. Hey, all right. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws will have massive planets. Yeah, Star Wars Outlaws sounds like a slam dunk from the get-go. A single-player third-person action event adventure developed by Massive Entertainment, developers of The Division. <laughs> so maybe not a success. Ah, fuck. Um, but it's important not to get ahead of ourselves and keep expectations in check. Uh, Ubisoft's Massive Entertainment is being uh, quiet, quite helpful in this with creative director Julian uh, Girardi uh, sharing extensive details, including handy comparisons in the latest issue of Edge magazine. As reported by MP1, MP First, uh, Gerardi uh, said that the, each planet in the game is designed to feel like a journey 
even when utilizing vehicles, and players should expect them to be roughly equivalent to two or three zones in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Each will be handcrafted for going procedural generation, and Gerardi uh, described more details about Outlaw's various workings uh, if you can peruse below. But basically, the whole crux of the article is, well, the whole big point, the thing that people are reporting on is the planets and outlaws are not going to be procedurally generated. They're going to be like handmade. And not only that, each planet is going to be roughly the size of a map in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I appreciate that because that means it was it's designed like a level. Yeah. You know, which uh, I, yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. I don't think I ever expected it to be procedural. It didn't, especially from the trailer, it seemed just like a Ubisoft game. Yeah. I I think because because I think a lot of people think this is going to be like No Man's Sky and all those planets are procedurally generated and also Starfields I think is using procedural generation. Well, they they tried to show off in the trailer the same sort of we talked about this whether they do the same sort of thing where you are on the ground and then you Mm -hmm. go into space, but it's not seamless. So I don't know why they showed that. Like that didn't seem like. Well, I think they wanted to show that like you know you do ground stuff, but you can also do space stuff. Yeah, no, I understand. Mm-hmm. And it's like kind of seamless, but it wasn't very impressive. Um, but I don't want it to necessarily be a procedural thing. I don't want it to necessarily be as massive as something like uh, uh, Starfield or like yeah. No Man's Sky. I, I, I want well-designed, well-crafted levels and stuff. Yeah. So how is a planet going to work? So like you... Do you only get a chunk of the planet, or do you get the whole planet? That'd I guess it would weird. depend on the planet. If I remember correctly from Mass Effect, you didn't necessarily get the whole planet, but the planets were huge. Yeah. You had a lot of space to explore Well, on. because in this, you are in space, and then you go to a planet, and you land. And this is what I'm assuming. You don't yeah. actually see this happen, but you see them leave a planet. So you're in space, you see a planet, you land, you get covered in, in atmosphere and, and clouds, and then you yeah. come out the other end, and I guess you're just in the vertical slice of the planet right okay yeah it's probably something like that okay that makes sense yeah i mean i'm down the game seems interesting i'm a little upset that it is the developer of the division because i didn't like that and i think we must have looked this up before uh also their wikipedia page was purple (laughs) it means i clicked on it um they've only made the division and avatar and just dance now ah and ground control and world in conflict. Mm. So yeah. I have... My expectations are lower now. Yeah. Because of that. Why did I think they made something else? Do, do you know what? Oh, I'm thinking of Reflections, which made the driver games. And they are now forced to make Just Dance. That sucks. <laughs> they made such like a critically acclaimed yeah. game. Oh, no, they also made Grow Up and Grow Home. So there you go. They still got it. Oh, boy. Well, I'll play that game. Yeah. Just like I'll be playing Jedi Survivor. I haven't touched I, it. I still need to finish Fallen Order. I'm trying to get through Resident Evil 4 Remake. Like, I'm just pushing through. I know, I might. I'm, I'm doing that thing where I have either my Steam Deck or my Ally mm-hmm. with me. I pick it up. I'm ready to like do something, like to play something. I pick it up. Oh, there's an update. Update. Oh, there's an update on Resident Evil. Update. Put it down. Pick up my Game Boy, and I just play my Game Boy. Yeah. <sighs> Super Nintendo World uh, welcomes Toad. Toad has been added as a new walkabout character. Oh my Joining God. Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach. Toad will now be on hand to welcome guests and take part in the ongoing photo opportunities. We think the costume is pretty darn good. I like him. Yeah. Uh, it just sucks that, you know, mascots don't talk. So it would be nice to have someone go, hello, as soon as you walk in. That was pretty good. <laughs> I have to tweet about this guy. I feel like this is the first time I've ever done a Toad impression. <laughs> uh, uh, what is this? New controls for your direct messages of in. Oh my, yeah, no, I just off. like go away. Uh, Threads needs to be a better app so I can start using it more. Threads needs a desktop. Thread needs a desktop. It needs trending topics. It needs uh, f- fucking a, a separation between, you know, ex- an explore page and a timeline feed. It needs a lot of things. It needs a lot of things. I've kind of fallen off of threads. Yeah. But then I got rate limited again on Twitter. Apparently so I they're right adding back. rate limits to threads now. 
So like, yes. What the fuck I, is the point? I have faith that the rate limits on Threads will be nowhere near the rate limits on Twitter. Anyway, last news. In a surprise move, Activision has revived the multiplayer service for a number of 360-era Call of Duty games. Weird. And it's provided to be a popular decision. In fact, this past weekend, the 360 uh, Call of Duty games reportedly had more players than both Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042 combined. That's According to Call of Duty news account Modern Warzone, this weekend saw more people playing 360-era Call of Duty games that were released over 10 years ago than there were playing contemporary first-person shooters. Um, Xbox fan account Idlesloth84 corroborated this news with a screenshot revealing that there were 123,000 people playing uh black ops 11 11 000 people playing black ops 2 79 000 people playing modern warfare 3 all on xbox 360 servers uh the original black ops was released in 2010 um and modern warfare 3 was released the following year i have one of these on steam because okay. of a uh, video i made a thousand years ago where i wanted to compare the console version or something okay uh i'm trying to see which one i have now because i can't play modern warfare 2 unless i put the disc in correct and i don't want to do that now can i put so so first of all the servers aren't up for modern warfare 2 it seems uh well this seems like they are for modern warfare 3 this article lists uh yeah black ops black ops 2 and modern warfare 3 yeah so i'm assuming Modern Warfare 2 isn't available, but, but Modern Warfare 3 is. And I kind of Maybe fell not. off on the 3. Yeah, because 3 was not good. I have Black Ops 3 on Steam. That's okay. not That's not. That's not what I want. One. No. Modern Warfare 3, though, I mean, I could, I could get the disc for that. Can I play that in my Xbox series? That's yeah. my question. Okay. Okay. Box uh, feet. I have feet. Yeah, I have feet. <laughs> Uh, unfor- unfortunately, hackers are reportedly still present in the old school servers, and the gameplay is feeling a bit off on the Xbox Series X and S, as some Shit. players are experiencing input delay on their ninth generation consoles. Currently, it's unknown whether Activision will continue to improve the experience of these older games for players who are experiencing issues. Probably not. It's just be lucky you have the servers up and running, you dogs. <laughs> Holy Lettuce says that you can play Modern Warfare 2 on your Series S. You can play it, but as are the servers up? Can you do multiplayer? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why the article would leave that out. Yeah, that's got to be the most popular one. Why wouldn't they? Am I just out of touch? I thought Modern Warfare Two was the one everybody wants to play. I don't know. I know people are very interested in Black Ops. Also, you know what though? um, I would play Black. I like Black Ops. No, I think Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare Two is playable. So where was that on the list? I don't think it was in the article, but according to the is tweet... It, is it not as popular as those other games? According to the tweet from Modern Warzone, there are more there are more people playing 10-plus-year-old 10, 10 Call of Duty games on Xbox right now than there are playing Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042 combined. Crazy how many people are playing old games after Activision decided to fix the matchmaking and servers on Xbox. And in the screenshot, he lists Modern Warfare... Worlds at War, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, and Black Ops 2. Does it have uh, numbers or no? No. Okay. But that leads me to believe that you can play Modern Warfare 2. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't give you, like, the number of people who are playing it. That's weird because, again, I would think that that would be the most popular. But I forgot, Black, Black Ops was also insanely popular and... I mean, it was the most popular in this list. Mm-hmm. And I liked that game, so I'm, I could just play that instead. That's in, That seems interesting. Yeah. Maybe I'll boot that up one of these days. That's it. That's all. That's the news. the news. And I forgot to do a tweet of the week. Uh, so I guess we'll just talk to these people for now. Well, speaking of uh, Call of Duty, I just saw Jazzwares is showing off their Call of Duty action figure line. They looks, have action figures? Yeah. It looks it look okay. It's Ghost and um, Mason from Black Ops. Ghost makes a good action figure. Ghost would make a good action figure. Mason looks like a uh, G.I. Joe knockoff. Remember the Call of Duty Jeep? The Black Ops Jeep? Black Ops Jeep. Oh, the... An actual car? Yes. Yes. I think I there was one that. that used to park by me in Brooklyn. 
like the officially the branded Call of Duty. Yes, you could go to a Jeep dealership and go, "I want the Call of Duty Black Ops yeah. Wrangler," and they'd be like, "Okay, here it is. There you go." Uh, they got to do that more. Yeah, I remember when I I used to drive a Jeep Renegade, and I loved that car. But when I got the car, uh, it was the same year that Batman vs Superman came out, and they had a Batman vs Superman Jeep Ren- Jeep Renegade, Ooh. and I was just like, oh. No, I mean no, that's kind of no, cool. Now people think I bought this car for because of a shitty movie. <laughs> you know what? I don't have a lot of tweets here in my in my little docket because oh, no. I haven't fucking been able to use Twitter because <laughs> I keep getting fucking rate limited. So no tweet of the week. Fuck you, Twitter. Oh no, do I have any? I don't know, man. I just look through my likes. Yeah, and this is all hot garbage because I haven't been on freaking Twitter. Is there a Threads of the week? Can I look through my likes on threads? <laughs> I can do TikTok of the week. I got some banger TikToks yeah. in my likes. Uh, I don't know, man. A lot of things are just people. I'm liking things of, uh, you know, things I agree with. I with I regards to Batman movies. I don't have a. You can't look at likes on threads. Yeah. It's, it seems. All right. I give up. Now we're talking. Oh, I, no, this is a good one. This okay. is a good one. This All right. Wait, hold on. We'll do this. Twitter of the week. Twitter of the week. Twitter of the week. All right, this is from Mike Drucker, okay. the famous comedy writer Mike Drucker. It would be funny if David Zaslov showed up at Bob Iger's house with an 8 millimeter camera and was like, we, do, we, got, we just got to do it ourselves, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much liking the, the the SAG strikes right now. Yeah, I I like I know, like, yeah, my, my hope is that the SAG strike and the Writers Guild strike lasts a long time. So that I can have an opportunity to catch up on all the movies and TV shows that I'm behind on. Right. And, of course, that everyone gets paid fairly and that they don't use AI for a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. So, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to a, a nice break so I don't have to catch up on anything. I can catch up on my backlog. I right? mean, these people, these these execs make a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, spread it around a little bit, wouldn't yeah. you? Like, and, 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 you know, like, pe- people always think about, like, don't don't the actors already make a lot of money? I mean, when you when you say that, you're thinking of like your Tom Cruises and your well, Brad Pitts. I, I, and like, I had this conversation with somebody, yeah, and I said, "Well, you know a lot of YouTubers, right? Mm-hmm. There's when people think of a YouTuber, they think of you know like the Logan Pauls and stuff that yeah. make like a fuck ton of money. But then you see like our friends, and it's yeah. like they're living pretty modestly, you know. Like yeah. there's all different levels, exactly, of, yeah." Of, of work you know there. and even people like who work on like regular network television you know aren't making anywhere near the you know tom cruise money or anything like yeah. that so i was i was in the rock band 2 commercial yes i think i made 200 dollars. yeah so yeah. if you were you know if you were a sag member i was not a sag member. probably could have gotten a little more and you but that's the thing if i was a sag member i don't think they would have hired me true because yeah. uh they would have had to pay me more yeah because I think the way that it worked was like that there was like the guys who were like kind of in the background and that was me yeah and, and like thirty other people and then they had like the four main guys yeah and they got paid you know the mm-hmm. SAG rate they were like the SAG guys yeah anyway uh all right well now we're talking to you people yes first starting with people who commented. Let- on last week's Wilson podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Dan Podcast. I did it. Thank you so much. Okay. Like B Cell 13, who says Capcom should make a modern Mega Man BN RPG. What is that? Oh, Battle, Battle Network. Network. Would be awesome. Okay. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't like Battle Network. I think, yeah, I think before you can do like a Mega Man RPG, like you need to reintroduce Mega Man and you need to reintroduce Mega Man. In a more traditional sense, before you can start doing like the the wacky spinoffs, you know, mm-hmm. and like we talked about last week, it, it's it's got to be a jump and shoot game where you can take the boss's powers at the end. So, Legends three, fucking just do a Legends three. See, I don't know if that would, oh, because Legends three, I, I'm talking about like a full like ground up reboot of Mega Man. You know, kind of like what they did with Tomb Raider. No, I, I I understand. I'm a little afraid of them rebooting a character. Uh, me too. Like that. But like, but I think I think that one of the best examples of taking Mega Man and putting him in 3D in a modern era mm-hmm. was Legends, mm-hmm. and that can be used 
again to bring him further into the modern right. era is what I'm trying to say. Because Mega Man like X8, that wasn't it. Yeah. They tried and that was not it. Uh, Odyssey 2252 says, do you think that if Microsoft and Activision stop selling Activision in the UK for legal reasons, it will affect their dealings with Ireland? What? Companies tend to forget that they are two different countries. Uh, maybe. It could be a thing. Why? Uh, well, Why? because, so, the UK is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Yeah. But that doesn't include regular Ireland. Uh -huh. Regular Ireland is separate from the UK. And what what they're saying is a lot of companies, if they can't do business in the United Kingdom, they won't do business in that entire region, which includes Ireland. Oh, uh, okay. I understand. So, well, that's dumb. Yeah, that is dumb. Uh, but, I mean, it looks like they're working on something. I think because the, the big hang up uh, with the UK was cloud gaming. And I think in, in one of the articles I read, they said like something to the effect of we realize we had the wrong idea of cloud gaming. So they're working on something. Okay. They're that's working good. on pushing forward with this. Metal Microsoft will own Activision by the time I turn 37, which Me will be next year. Metal Buds Gaming, you're going to turn 37. I know. I'm you're fucking old. Fucking I'm old, fucking dude. old. Metal Buds Gaming says, yeah, Mega Man 11 was ass. How are you going to release a Mega Man game with bad music? I don't True. remember the music. I mean, I just remember the balloon stage was just an overall abomination. I think the music was also bad in that. But Well, yeah, because I mean, like Mega Man has always had banger music. You know, that's just the series that that was one of those series, like regardless of quality, you can count on the music. You know, like Sonic the Hedgehog, no matter how bad the game was, it always had great music. Is it called Bounce Man? Sounds like it would be Bounce Man. Bounce Man? Uh, music. All right. Well, you do that. Uh, Pete 1042. It's such a mind-boggling thing because I swear most of the games we've seen this year, at least in the AAA sense, have been remakes slash remasters, and there seems to be a lot more coming. A couple of years down the line, we're going to have remakes for the remakes at this rate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Star Fox is a great example. Because <laughs> Star Fox 64 is the one everybody knows, and mm -hmm. that's just a remake of Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Right. It's the same fucking game. But Pete's talking about, well, like I've been talking about, like the top rated games of the year have been Metroid, Rem Metroid Prime Remastered, Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, and they just announced we're getting, you know, Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill 2, yeah. and, you know, System Shock the remake just came out, and that got critical acclaim. We're getting all of these remakes of past games and like nothing new is really coming. Nothing yeah. truly new is really coming out. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not a good thing. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm playing bounce man, Steve. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. It's not, that's not a mega man music. That's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's not like mega it. man music. Uh, the last one here is Charlie Fenn, who says, I agree with the disclaimers, but otherwise leaving games alone is if there is something controversial or wrong or anything like that. That's how we have recently started dealing with things in the UK and historic buildings. Any items that are connected to things that like the slave trade now have a disclaimer and that they are there for understanding as part of our history and they do not condone it. Although I would argue we know that we knew that anyway. Yeah, I mean, we know that already. Yeah. But there's some psychos out there who take things like that and are like, yeah. Yeah. They like agree with it in like yeah. a really weird that's, way. That's the problem. Yeah. So like we're, yeah, we know that it's like historically it, out of it touch. It happened and you should know about it so that you don't do it again. Yeah, we have the general understanding that yes. it wasn't, oh, that's not okay. Yeah. But there are people who look at that shit and, and are emboldened by yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You know? Even if you don't know any of them, they're, they're, they're yeah, they, they're out there. <sighs> Bounce Man theme sounds like the Nintendo Direct music. It kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, like it's just it's just not Mega Man music. Yeah, no, it's weird. Exo Primal is mindless. To, oh, now I'm in the chat, by the way. Yeah, Exo Primal is mindless dino killing fun. Runs surprisingly well, included with Game Pass, so worth a try. I downloaded it on my ROG Ally. Because I'm making an ROG Ally video this week. By the way, I said in my last stream I was going to be doing a video on... I want to do a video on this fucking Game Boy that I've been making, but it's yeah. taking too goddamn long to make it, so I need to come up with a new video real quick. I was going to 
do this uh freaking I was gonna do this GameCube Joy Con thing that I have, but uh, I decided I'm gonna do the ROG Ally versus the Steam Deck after two months. There you so go. I'm doing that. And so I'm got I downloaded uh Exo Primal because it's Game Pass and uh you can't download Game Pass games on the Steam Deck, but uh, you can yeah. on the Ally. So uh who dis in the chat says Bob could pass for British. What the fuck does that mean? Could he? I don't think I've ever heard you talk with a British accent in any sort of seriousness. I can't do a British <laughs> accent. Uh, hey, Will, can you stand up the Mario behind you? The Mario behind? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, there you go. He's on his head. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Alec is baking. Says fighting words. Is, am I supposed to be offended that I that I could pass for British? I don't know. Fuck you too, then. So, Bob, what do you think about the Pokemon leaks? I don't care about Pokemon leaks. <laughs> the next game might be a sequel to Black and White. That would be cool, actually. You know what? Yeah, I did hear that. That the next game like is going to be not like you know Pokemon whatever and whatever. It's just going to be like Black and White three or something. Holy Lettuce in the chat says, hey, Bob, what's the stream plan for this week? I don't know because I'm filming the Nintendo podcast on Thursday and that's usually a whole day affair and then I get home and then I'm tired and don't want to do anything. So uh, usually I stream on Thursdays. I don't know what this week's going to be like. If I don't stream on Thursday, then I'll be streaming on Friday. Uh, and that's all I that's all. I, and I don't know what I'm going to do because uh, I don't know if I will have things ready for the continuation of the game boy hack thing the most recent halo jeep was for infinite there's a halo jeep hmm. uh do we read uh wiley cox's oh i keep i keep dipping out of stream for some reason <laughs> Uh, hey, Wolf Bros, love the podcast. Have to listen to an older episode now because Twitch isn't connecting on the Metro. <gasps> Going to see Face Off at a small local movie theater. Yo, Face Off is such a good movie. That's pretty sick. That is awesome. Oh, man. That is a good movie. I kind of want to watch Face Off now. I'm not going to watch Face Off. But I should watch Face Off. I don't think Jeep... Wait. 2021 jeep gladiator rubicon is this a thing you i could buy huh i don't remember that at yeah all. i don't know that one built in partnership with rockstar energy <laughs> okay i don't <laughs> want it well unsc that's the halo thing yeah so but like is this like a one-off by purchasing a halo rockstar energy drink you could enter to win this jeep okay yeah. the the call of duty jeep was what, you can go into a dealership and say, I want the Call of Duty Because Jeep. it was just a regular ass Jeep. With a Call of Duty sticker on yeah. it on the side. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I, I want a card that's like, it's got some whacked out shit going on with it. Like, yeah. I get, like, you know, you could just go there and be like, I want to give me a Jeep. I'll take a yeah. Jeep. But going in and being like, I want the, the Call of Duty yeah. Jeep. <laughs> that's fucking cool. Yeah. You know? There used to be a guy I and mean, the, the parking lot of the great American drugstore. Yes. <laughs> there was a car. It was like a Toyota. Uh, uh, fuck, I don't know. I don't know anything about cars. It was a Corolla or some yeah. shit. And the hood had an airbrushed Sonic the Hedgehog. I remember that. Busting out of the hood with, with a, a handgun. It was so fucking this cool, was, man. This was like at least... A decade or so before Shadow the Hedgehog. Yes. Jeep Wrangler, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3. I remember the Black Ops one. I don't remember the Modern Warfare 3 one. This is 2021? Um, Wait, I could buy it, right? Wait, it's $26,000. Am I going to get a Call of Duty Jeep? <laughs> uh, in 2011, it was Black Ops. Yes. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. That's the one that I remember. Yeah. That's cool. We'll just have to drive to Florida. Oh, it's a dog shit car then. That's, <laughs> that's what ruined my last car yeah. was being in Florida. The whole bottom rusted out. Fuck this car. Never mind. I don't want it. Take it back. 
Would you suggest getting the Steam Deck now or waiting for 2.0? Yeah, there's going to be a while till the next Steam yeah, Deck. Yeah, I would say just get a Steam Deck yeah. if you want a Steam Deck. The next Steam Deck isn't going to be for a while. So uh, don't don't go too crazy. And plus, all the Call of Duty ads are from Sony. What? Uh, okay. Uh, Bob wants a Pikachu buggy. Yeah, I would take that. Oh, yeah. I would take that. I just saw something like... I saw a girl on TikTok who has the Pikachu... A Volkswagen bus, a bug, and and the Lugia uh, PC Cruiser. Yes. Oh wow. Just both. I saw an article. It was like the importance of the Pokemon Volkswagen Beetle, and like it was it was talking about like this is probably the most important relic of the the peak of Pokemon Mania in the nineties. I'm like, all right. I mean, you're not wrong. It was instantly recognizable. There it is. But I think the games had something to do with it. The games kind of had a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. We made, we talked about this on the podcast. Uh, the Mini uh, Cooper. The Pokemon Edition Mini oh, Cooper. Oh, right, 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 right. That looks like it has nothing to do with Pokemon. Yeah. Hi, Wolves. Greetings from Guatemala. Hello. Hello. RG Ally or Steam Deck, though. I just want to play GTA 4 for now. You can get that on Steam, right? I think so. If you can get it on Steam, then get a Steam Deck. Yeah. There you go. If that's the only thing you care about, then if you can get it on Steam, get it on Steam. Well, make sure it's great on deck. Yeah. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand wherever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and any and every audio podcast platform but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms i'm sorry i could not find a picture of sonic busting through the hood of a car that had to have been a one of a kind thing it was the picture of it was the sonic 3 him on the cover no, of I, think sonic it was, I think it was sonic 2 wasn't it hold on we were children when we saw this yes Yes. Um, Might have even been Sonic 1. It was Sonic 2. It was Sonic 2, and he just had a fucking deagle yeah. in his hand. <laughs> anyway, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I Like I said, I might stream on Thursday. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm going to do the podcast live on Thursday at, uh, the studio and I will have a video up hopefully on Thursday and I'll be streaming this weekend. What I, you know, the whole deal. Thanks for being here. Go watch wood. I don't know what, I don't know what the hell he's doing. I just see his bicep on the screen. Uh, how do I raid him? All right. Thanks for being here. Ghost of Hadwood. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.